Hey, how's it going? It's me, the girl. So this is going to be a different video format than I usually do. Uh, it's not going to be heavily edited and scripted. Still semi-scripted, just not my normal zany, quip-filled fashion. Um, my Joss Whedon tulpa is absent for this recording, I'm sorry. This is just going to be me talking about something that's been on my mind as of late. Uh, just sort of a general discussion on the topic, that being the whole Nintendo soundtrack debacle as of late. Um, this isn't going to be a rant per se, there's going to be a lot of criticism and like salt as it were, um, but that's not the main focus of what I'm going to be talking about. And yeah, I'm going to be talking a ton of smack on Nintendo here, so if you're somebody who loves Nintendo, finds themselves getting upset at that sort of thing, I'd say it, this video is probably not for you. I just recommend dipping out for this one. It's all right. So I'll briefly explain the situation. This has been something that's been talked about like a million times. There's no point in going super in depth about it, but I'll just provide the context just to start. If you didn't know, one of the many recent Nintendo controversies that's been going on has been their YouTube soundtrack takedowns. They've been going through, finding larger channels or larger uploads of music from their games, copyright claiming them, and getting them removed or blocked in certain regions. This kind of started back in 2019 to a smaller scale, but really picked up in the last year and resulted in one of the more notable video game soundtrack channels, Gilva Center, uh, deleting their whole channel in February due to so much of their channel already being wiped clean by Nintendo, so they just went ahead and abandoned ship. This whole thing has continued pretty consistently since then. Uh, I know Deoxys Prime is another larger channel that recently just deleted all of their Nintendo content. Um, they were already getting struck down in a lot of cases, so they just went ahead and wiped their channel clean of any Nintendo related stuff, which sucks, but um, this is a smart decision on their part. Now, this has been controversial because this is just a super duper shitty thing to do <laughs> for a multitude of reasons. Uh, the main one being that in the three or so years that they've been doing this, they have not made any attempt at all to make the music that they are getting taken down available officially themselves. There's still no way for you to purchase them or give Nintendo money to listen to them in any form. They haven't even bothered. Um, so this understandably has made people very angry 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 this has made people very angry myself included um like what is the point <laughs> you know if you're not going to give any official way for us to pay you for them it is 100 percent harmless for these to exist on youtube uh, to be free for everyone to listen to like why why does it matter you're not letting us buy them what do you gain from this? This unfortunately kind of ties back into a greater issue with Nintendo and their gross anti-preservation practices and just overall terrible handling of their old content, which again is a take that is definitely not gone unsung on the internet, so I'm not going to get into that whole thing. If you've seen my other videos, you probably already know this, but I absolutely adore listening to video game soundtracks. It's a huge interest of mine. It's primarily what I listen to during my day today. Um, as opposed to lyrical music, which I fully acknowledge makes me the absolute loser here. Don't don't worry. With how much of an almost mini passion this is for me, you can probably imagine that I am very much not a fan of Nintendo making a big push to make this stuff unavailable to listen to. So uh, the whole thing's been on my mind recently, and it's got me thinking about how Nintendo could solve the issue if they ever decided to, which does not at all seem likely anytime soon, and if they did, it would probably be a really terrible and lazy solution that would anger people, but hey, I'm, you know, trying to be a little bit positive and engage in some uh, fun, wishful thinking, so that's what this video is going to be about, just me discussing all the potential options open to them when it comes to officially releasing their game's soundtracks, just kind of what would be better, what would be worse, and what I personally would like myself. I just want to say that this isn't out of any desire to like support Nintendo directly or um, listen to these like legally and officially. I couldn't give less of a shit when it comes to like doing right by a corporation. In my opinion, the number one best solution would just be for Nintendo to knock it the fuck off and let people share their stuff around because uh, this really does not hurt them like they'd like you to think it does. 
That's kind of a whole other can of worms, but um, the main reason I'm talking about this is just in hopes that they could provide some sort of service to fans of their music and games that would be better than what we have uh, available to us right now, because they have all the music, all of the money and resources available to them that they could give us something infinitely better than just listening to these songs on YouTube if they wanted to. Also, I'm going to be phrasing a lot of this like I'm talking directly to Nintendo. I, this is just a formatting thing. I know they're not watching. This isn't a fucking dear Sega type of deal. Oh, and one more thing really quick. Please keep this discussion of this topic within the confines of this video in this comment section. Although this is a shitty controversy that I care about, um, the things going on in the world are way more important than this <laughs> trivial shit. This is just a video for fun, um, talking about something I enjoy talking about. So don't start more discussions about this on Twitter and all of that. Like we, we don't need that. Put that energy into more important things right now. Uh, I would appreciate that. <laughs> Sounds like there's seagulls outside, but um, I live in the Midwest, so I don't I don't know what the fuck those birds are. All right, so what are the possibilities? Starting with the absolute best case scenario that would um, honestly be the most sensical decision both for them and us uh, would just be to upload all these soundtracks to YouTube themselves. Uh, this is something I've wondered about for like a while as far as why they haven't done this already or at least tried to. Recently they did upload one of their tracks uh, to YouTube as its like own video upload. I think for the first time it was the Penny song from the new WarioWare game, which is really interesting, but uh, this is most likely just one of those times where Nintendo does something cool and then never does it again. <laughs> they could release all their music on their main channel if they wanted to, although I think making a separate channel specifically for this music would be better. Um, just like calling it Nintendo Music or so, like something like that, I don't know. They can make a render of Mario with headphones as the little icon, that might be cute. But yeah, this would just be the best option out of everything. There's already a gigantic community of people listening to video game soundtracks right now on YouTube. If I were to guess, it's probably like way more than any other platform that houses that sort of thing, just because it's the most accessible and obviously it's free. And uh, YouTube just also tends to be a general hub for gaming related nostalgia anyways, which um, would also mean that having this music up and available for free would also kind of operate as free promotional material for the games. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've gone and listened to a soundtrack for a game that I like, and it got me super in the mood to play it. So I either went and played it on my old console or uh, bought it on my Switch if I could, uh, because it's super convenient. Or even if it's a newer game that I haven't played yet, and I'll hear a song on YouTube and I'm like, oh, that sounds really awesome. Uh, and it gets me in the mood to check out the game. It's like free advertising, you know? And if direct profit from their music is one of their main concerns, then, um, hey, you can run ads on these videos and collect all of that ad revenue for yourself. Like I said, people listening won't have to pay anything and you get to get, keep all of that ad revenue, you know, it's a win-win. Some other general benefits to this would be the music quality for one, obviously. Also, everything would be very concise and easy to find. It would all be in one place by one uploader, it would be a lot less confusing to find specific songs in general. There wouldn't be an issue of weird mislabelings or confusing track names or whatever. At least hopefully that would be the case. And since this is on YouTube, uh, another great bonus is the ability to put all these songs in whatever playlists you want. Because again, YouTube is such a huge hub for video game soundtracks and just like music in general. So um, you can mix and match songs, put them in whatever fucking playlist you want. You know, it's great. However, in order for this to be an actually adequate solution, there are some things that would be absolutely imperative for them to do on their end. Firstly, upload everything. <laughs> everything in your library that you have and are legally able to publish, make it available. I cannot stress that enough. There are some soundtracks and music that are kind of in a weird legal limbo uh, that might be legally impossible to make public yourself. Like I get that. I'm thinking, you know, like Mario RPG or Donkey Kong 64 or those kinds of things um, that aren't exclusively owned by Nintendo and them alone. But all games and all soundtracks that you have gone after and gotten taken down 
make it available yourselves. <laughs> if you can't or just will not, people are going to find it elsewhere. That's just how it is. And again, going after soundtracks, getting them taken down when you aren't willing to get them out there yourselves is completely pointless, silly, and harmful. Don't do that shit. That's the part that I would honestly be the most concerned about if Nintendo announced that they were taking to this YouTube idea like tomorrow or something is the likelihood of them either being stingy or half-assing what they put out there. Like, hey, Mario Galaxy, people love that game and its music. So uh, yeah, we're gonna throw that out there. But I, I mean, I don't know if people care about music from like the original Mario Party that much. Like we don't, we don't need to do that one. Um, we'll just choose the games that people like the most. Or even like, okay, Mario Galaxy, what songs do people like? Um, okay, we'll do Gusty Garden, obviously, Gusty Garden Galaxy. Um, you know, maybe Rosalina's Observatory, that's that's a fan favorite. And then, you know, Toy Time Galaxy, that's the Mario theme, people like the Mario theme. Uh, and yeah, that's like probably good. Those are the popular ones, right? We'll just, you know, just put those up and call it a day. Or my other big fear would be them taking the same approach to pretty much all of their other modern legacy content endeavors, the infamous drip feed, like, hey, here's the Ocarina of Time soundtrack. Um, then come like three months, they're like, okay, here's the Skyward Sword soundtrack. Like, no, please <laughs> do it as quickly as possible. I understand that they can't drop every single soundtrack from every single game like overnight. I, I get that. Obviously, there would have to be a small team of people managing these, getting them all together and posting them. It can't just be a one and done easy deal. Like that's completely understandable. But you have to put these up as soon as you were able or at least like have a consistent schedule for that. That would be perfectly OK if, you know, maybe they did a game a week or like a good chunk of songs maybe every other day or something. Um, I could see that happening and working. Uh, could even generate a little bit of excitement, kind of like, you know, the old Wii Shop channel days when they would put a chunk of new games up there every Wednesday. It would be kind of fun, you know? Update day for the Wii Shop! But given their attitude, especially with their NSO content, um, I would not be surprised at all if they just completely phoned the shit in or just acted really stubborn about what they release. It's not a solution at all. Please get everything out there in your power, no matter the obscurity of said games or said tracks, and put it out all at a relatively good pace. Secondly, um, make sure each song is a good length with, you know, just like two or three loops max, maybe just one if it's a super long track or has a definitive ending. Uh, just make them a reasonable, typical song length if possible. Don't like take a song that has a 30 second loop and post it as is. Thirdly, separate them into coherent playlists so tracks can be found easily, all that jazz. Super important to make sure everything is user friendly and able to be searched for and found not just like buried as they are uploaded. And fourthly, make sure it's just the tracks themselves in each video. Don't add annoying intros or outros that break up the listening experience. Uh, that would be super dumb and frustrating. I'm saying this because in the Penny song upload that they did, they had the switch click sound in the beginning, which like isn't the absolute worst thing they could have done. But you know, that song coming on in the middle of a playlist with that click is really annoying and just makes me want to listen to other uploads that don't have that. Nintendo, I know you like your your brand cohesion and all of that, but like, just we don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that. So yeah, this would probably be the absolute best option for them. It's just such a no brainer. Um, it's the easiest, the most beneficial for them and the fans and would most likely make them the most money, at least I think. As long as it's well done, you know, made user friendly with the viewer in mind, makes everything available that they're able to, um, it could be the best solution. It just makes so much sense. All right, so other options. If they didn't want to go the YouTube route for some reason, the next best thing would be making all their music available on other platforms. So, you know, your Apple Musics, your Spotify's, all that fun stuff. So officially licensing their music and selling it commercially, I guess, is another way to put it. Now, I don't have any experience using all these 
Again, YouTube is really the only place I listen to music regularly, so I'm not super knowledgeable on the ins and outs of how all that would work. But what I do know is that there's a lot of people who would really enjoy having these available there. This is obviously like the most mainstream approach, I guess you could say. Like overall, these are definitely the platforms that are used more in general by people who listen to music, you know, just across the board. So it would make a lot of sense. Um, however, I think as far as like the audience for video game soundtracks go, Again, I think a lot more of that is going to be over on YouTube. Just ideally, both of these options could be available at the same time for like both the YouTube people and the Spotify, iTunes, etc. crowd. But um, if Nintendo wants to just go with one or the other, I still think YouTube would be the better choice, but um, enough people would listen this way, so it would definitely be worth it. The benefits to this one would be similar. Again, on their end, they'd be able to make money from the music more in a direct sense this time when it comes to like iTunes and things like that, where you can just outright buy the albums or songs individually. For listeners, again, you'd have the option to add these songs to playlists, mix and match uh, with whatever you'd like. You wouldn't be bound to Nintendo only listening, which would be nice. And specific to having these up to purchase commercially, you'd now have a more concrete way of owning these songs if you bought them from iTunes or whatever. Uh, you know, you could download them and have them, wouldn't have to bank on them staying up on streaming services and all that. Although that's of course if your main concern is being a good little Christian little legal goody two-shoes because finding mp3s of every Nintendo song ever may or may not be incredibly easy to do right now, so you know, just saying. Again, there's a lot of things that would absolutely need to happen for this to be a good solution. Um, a lot of these are the same, like once again, Make sure everything is available at least somewhere. If not, don't take down YouTube uploads. I cannot stress that enough. And again, make sure it's released at the fastest rate possible or at least at a reasonable pace. Uh, it might be a little bit more difficult when you're officially releasing them through labels and whatnot. And I'm not exactly sure how all that works, but just no intentional drip feeding of any kind, please. Make each track a good length with a decent amount of loops, not too long or short. For little like quick jingles and such, they might want to either exclude them or combine them all into like one compilation track, I guess, because uh, it's like a lot easier to put those kind of tracks on YouTube than it would be to release them as purchases songs like no one is gonna want to buy the Mario Odyssey moon collect jingle um, unless it was like for a ringtone or something so I get that just again gotta stress that it should be at least available somewhere. Okay so this one definitely has some downsides to it uh, most of them I've already talked about but I'll just run through them super quickly. First like I've said a bunch of times um, there's going to be less traction to this music probably on like Spotify and iTunes and stuff just because there's less of an audience for video game music specifically on these platforms, but uh, there would be a considerable amount of people that would listen to this stuff on there. So The publishing process would also be lengthier and a bit more complicated than just throwing these up on YouTube, so Nintendo is a lot more likely to take their sweet time and be ridiculously slow when it comes to releasing these on there. And of course, uh, this option would require us to pay for the music as opposed to just listening to it for free on YouTube. As long as the service that Nintendo is providing to us is done really well and is of high quality, I would be totally willing to pay money for that. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of other people would too. But um, it's definitely not as great a scenario as having it all for free to listen to, obviously. So um, they would just have to do it good for it to be worth it. <laughs> However, as well as these downsides, there's a big negative that wouldn't be guaranteed, but has the potential to be very, very bad uh, and makes the prospect of them putting their stuff up on these platforms really nerve wracking for me and uh, makes me a lot more hesitant to say Nintendo should go this path because, oh boy, could it be very awful if this happened. What am I talking about? Um, well, it's Nintendo's music ending up in Twitch and YouTube's automatic content ID systems. I'll say once again, I'm not educated on the ins and outs of publishing music to platforms like this, all the Lego mumbo jumbo and whatnot that goes into this, but I do know that oftentimes parts of the process of submitting music to the musical companies involved in doing all that results in the music also being entered into that system, either by choice of the artist or studio or just 
automatically. I saw this being talked about by Toby Fox, uh, the creator of Undertale and Delta, and if you didn't know, uh, recently, who tweeted saying that in the process of copyright management and all that for the music from his games, uh, they were automatically entered into the copyright ID system without him knowing. And it was submitted to the music management society that we, he went through, I guess, which has resulted in YouTube's system automatically flagging videos containing Undertale or Delta and music in a lot of cases. I'm not sure if this is just the specific group that he went through that does this, or if it's always a thing that happens when you submit music for these sorts of things. I'm not sure. Again, if someone is more knowledgeable on this the whole process, please let me know. I would love to understand how that works a bit more. But So you can probably see why that would be absolutely terrible if that were to happen with Nintendo's music. If Nintendo went through that process of submitting their music, getting that all situated so they can monetize it on these platforms, and the system they went through just happened to generate all that content ID data automatically, suddenly any video on YouTube that has that music, even just in the background of a video, could get automatically detected and flagged. Because so far, Nintendo has been taking down only straightforward, unedited uploads of just the music, not just videos containing the music in the background or something. And as far as I know, it's all just been done by hand. Uh, I think they're just going through and striking down those bigger channels and uploads themselves. It wasn't a content ID thing. So if this was to happen with Nintendo accidentally, um, I can almost guarantee you they would not give a shit. They would not be at all cool enough to go, hey, uh, go ahead and refute any claims you get for videos that use it as background music. We're going to get that taken care of. They don't care. They're not cool like Toby Fox is. Hell, they may even see that happening and think that's a good thing. Like they might willfully choose to have their stuff entered into copyright ID like that. I don't know. I just know that if it was to happen, how I've described, if that's possible, that could be devastating. <laughs> there are so many channels that use Nintendo music in the background of their videos, even non-gaming channels. Um, I do, of course, I'm using it right now in this video. So that could be apocalyptic <laughs> when it comes to YouTube channels. That would be really bad. Again, would or could that even happen? I don't know. This is all just speculation. Uh, but it's a definite fear in the back of my head and just makes this whole prospect uh, kind of nerve wracking to me. Maybe irrationally. I don't know. You can tell me if I'm crazy, but I just thought I would mention this fear here. <laughs> So yeah, uh, besides all that, I think this would be a great option as well if they put all the effort needed into it to make it great. Um, although I don't use Spotify and all that, I know a lot of people who would love to listen to the music that way. It would be great to have it as an option on top of YouTube uploads. Uh, but even if they did just choose this route and this route only, uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Okay, now the final option that is the least favorable of the three, but could definitely be great if they put in all the effort required. As soon as those like initial takedowns started happening in around 2019, people began to speculate like, hey, is this in preparation to release their own music service of some kind themselves? Either it's its own separate thing or somehow tied into Nintendo Switch Online. Obviously that has not happened yet, but the concept has been brought up in discussion here and there ever since, particularly the possibility of something NSO related. Out of all of these options, I do feel that this would be the most likely scenario, unfortunately, because Nintendo loves their stuff being exclusive and special and completely controlled by them, especially when it comes to Nintendo Switch Online, of course. So it would just make a lot of sense, uh, more so based on their own tendencies with things. However, uh, the idea of a completely separate Nintendo music service and app uh, not paid for through NSO could be a possibility as well, and actually could provide the unique benefit of maybe being free kind of similar to YouTube and YouTube Premium and like other similar apps where you can download the app for free, use it, stream all the music you want, but uh, you'll have ads and the restriction of only listening to the music in the app, uh, meaning you can't turn your phone off or close the app and do other things while it still plays and then have a paid version with ads removed and the ability to listen anywhere, basically the YouTube Premium model, which like, isn't amazing, but could be a fairly good scenario where people are still able to listen free if they so chose. 
But again, I think the most likely case would be paying for it through NSO. That's probably what they would opt for, so that's what I'll be talking about. So the benefits for creating their whole own service for their music, uh, firstly, similar to the YouTube option, they would be able to get this stuff out a lot quicker as they wouldn't have to go through the whole professional legal submission process and copyright stuff for every song or album, at least I don't think so. They can just make this service and throw everything on there that they want. And since this would be their own service and platform, that of course means that they'd have a lot more freedom when it comes to all the extra features it has. They wouldn't be bound to how the other services operate, which could mean that they'd miss a lot of good features that these other services have. And I highly doubt that they'd do anything good with that structural freedom, but hey, the possibility for good stuff to come is there. <laughs> this could also potentially bulk up NSO a little bit more as well, which, you know, could be a good thing depending on how it's implemented, but we can talk about that more in a second. And since this is a part of NSO, that at least means that Nintendo might be a little bit more motivated to put more effort into this whole thing uh, and devote more energy and money to it, at least more than the other options, but I, I have no idea. Nintendo is weird. They don't have the best track record with NSO anyway, so I have no idea how that would go. Okay, the imperative features for this one. As always, gotta say again, Make everything available and do so at a fast pace. No soundtracks left out, no tracks left out, no drip feeding. If you aren't providing it, don't go after other uploads online. Clear cut, same thing I've been saying. Other things I've said for the others, make sure the tracks and songs are decent lengths, decent loop counts, etc. Make sure everything is categorized and organized in some way, labeled correctly, easy to find, in competent playlists or groups, all that good stuff. Which kind of leads me into the features uh, that this service and platform should have in general that I didn't have to say for the others because they already had them. A big one is make sure it is easy to navigate. <laughs> make sure everything is incredibly user friendly, has the ability to search for song names, search titles, game series in an easy and adequate way. Nintendo has failed super hard on this sort of thing before in games and services with like community features where it's just really hard to search for things for like no reason. <laughs> Mario Maker is coming to mind in particular. Just look at all those other music apps and streaming services and make sure it at least has all the basic features they have, please. <laughs> I beg you, please. That also means the ability to make playlists and all the customizable options therein, like shuffling and uh, naming, all that. Just make sure all the bare bones expected options are there. That's absolutely imperative. Please do not mess up those easy things. <laughs> Another big one, make this something that's affordable, so that means not making it exclusive to the ridiculously overpriced NSO expansion. I was going to mention that earlier, but like, put it in the base level $20 a year version. Don't make people pay that much for music, please. And this of course goes for if it's a separate streaming service from NSO, just have people pay a reasonable amount for this stuff, don't overprice it. And a huge, huge thing that I have to mention, there's a lot of huge things. Nintendo, for the love of God, do not make this a service just for the Switch. Like, don't add this to NSO and then just make it an app downloadable for the Switch and nothing else. I've been talking about it like it's an app available on iOS and Android and all of that because it absolutely should be. Um, <laughs> You might think this is a weird thing to specify, like why would they do that? Uh, but the reason I'm kind of afraid of this is that whole Smash Ultimate music thing, if you remember that, uh, back when Nintendo announced that all the music in Smash Ultimate would be available in a little music player in the game where you could make playlists and listen to music and have the switch off while you're listening to it, all that cool stuff. But um, the way they presented it was like, a lady out on a walk in the city uh, with her earbuds plugged into her Switch in her purse, <laughs> like walking around with it like it was a smartphone, but it's like the Switch in the, I don't know, it was really weird. It was really funny to me and a lot of people because like no one is going to use their Switch like that. <laughs> it's, it's this big console, like it's this portable console that you're carrying around, like listening to music. It's not, it's not easy. It doesn't really make sense. 
It also worried me though, because this was around the time of those initial takedowns in like 2019-ish. Uh, so like people were speculating, hey, you know, Nintendo might be doing this in preparation to release their own service of some kind. Um, so seeing this and being like, wait, is this how they envision people listening to their music? <laughs> like fucking in their headphones and walking around the streets of Tokyo with their Switch like in their pocket like it's fucking weird it's <laughs> thankfully that premonition has not come true yet but it's always worried me a little bit just sort of been in the back of my head when thinking about this topic it just feels like that perfect out of touch nintendo thing for them to do <laughs> now i'm not saying it shouldn't also be available on the switch i think that would be neat um having like the app and also having that service downloadable on the switch because i know there are kids and stuff that would use that to listen to music like it's not that absolutely no one would um they could even have it like run in the background while you're doing other things on the switch i know like the xbox has that feature where you can listen to music kind of globally on the console so you could be playing other games and listening to music that could be cool but first and foremost make it a streaming service that's available on other platforms like make that the absolute focus that's what people are going to use okay and the potential downsides for this whole nintendo exclusive service idea out of all three of these, I think this would result in the smallest listening audience overall. Not only would it be a video game specific music streaming service, but a Nintendo video game specific music streaming service paid through a pre-existing Nintendo video game specific service. You would be listening to only Nintendo music and would only be able to form playlists with Nintendo music. I could potentially see them maybe getting some other people on board, um, kind of like what they did with the Sega games on NSO. Like they could get, you know, Sonic soundtracks or maybe even some old rare ones like Banjo and stuff. Who knows? Just overall, this route seems to have the most potential to go wrong. Um, it just would give them the most room for Nintendo to be Nintendo, uh, it feels like. I just can imagine so clearly them announcing and releasing an app like this and immediately making people angry with how terrible it is. Like out of all of the potential solutions, this one just has the biggest chance of being awful to me. It would very much surprise me if they made a solid music streaming service, because uh, Again, they have not had the best track record with these sorts of things in the past. However, I'm going to try to be a little more positive here and talk about some little extra features that I would be really happy to see them implement to this sort of thing. None of these are must-haves by any means. These are just features above the bare minimum that they could do that I would like to see. Firstly, I think it would be awesome if they had an option to turn on kind of an ultimate shuffle mode of sorts that randomly chooses songs from their entire library to listen to, but uh, with the added bonus of having filters to customize it, like, you know, song length, music genre, game series, or maybe even like really fun specific things like level theme types, like, you know, like to have them only shuffle between all of the snow songs or all of the you know, water stage songs like that. That could be really fun to mess around with when you're in the mood for different styles of music. A nice additional quality of life option as well would be the ability to change the amount of loops that each song plays for. Like for instance, set all songs without a definitive end to say like two loops or five loops, uh, etc. That way people can make their own extended versions of songs if they wanted to uh, by, you know, setting it to like 30 loops or something. Um, or people like me that only like two or three could just set it to that. It would be a nice little customizable thing. Each song could have a little bit of info listed, like composer names, year of composition, lyrics for songs that have lyrics, maybe even little bits of trivia for tracks that are applicable. Um, I think that would be cool. And hey, here's something really awesome. What if they also provided prototype and beta music? Perhaps, you know, both the stuff that's already available to us and stuff that isn't. They could release never before heard beta songs or beta versions of tracks. That would be really awesome and would kind of, you know, boost up the service a little bit, make it more attractive to people. There could also be extra social features like uh, the ability to upload and download each other's playlists or look at other people's profiles and like see their most listened to tracks, kind of like, you know, a Spotify wrapped sort of thing. Uh, there could 
be the ability to send songs to friends with little messages or something. Just like cute little fun stuff like that. And this is something that's super not likely. They have not even added this to the Switch interface yet, but of course they could have little aesthetical customizable options like, you know, dark modes, light modes, I guess the Switch has that, but, you know, changing the colors of all of the UI or like maybe even visualizers that you can swap between. Like while a song plays, there could be a little animation that you could choose. Just little fun things like that. Um, overall, I want Nintendo to bring back more of their old interface personality stuff that they used to do with their software and games, kind of like the Wii, Wii U, 3DS era of just a lot of charm with how these things are presented. Um, I would really love for that sort of thing to return, especially in an app like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, overall, my main wish is just that they will at least try something. Just <laughs> release them in some form, even if it's just a little bit. I just want to see that they are trying. It's a lot less insulting when they're trying to make this stuff available, um, when they're also taking down uploads on YouTube and such. So. Sorry if this video sucked, uh, I'm really bad at talking just off the cuff in a non-scripted manner, as you probably can see. I just wanted to try this as sort of a little, you know, one-time thing, just to kind of test the waters. Also, I have been really slow on the content creation lately, so <laughs> I wanted to get something out that would be quicker um, to at least, you know, buy gel over for the next actual legit video. So yeah, just... You can let me know if you hated it in the comments, it's, it's cool. Uh, or if you did like this, you can tell me that too. I might try this again sometime in the future. Try to get better at talking without a script and stumbling and saying like and saying um all the time. So yeah, end video. I'll go, 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 in, go into the, the Patreon stuff, go into the Patreon. Go, 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 go into the Patreon. And I'd like to thank my scrunklies over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me. Spiderbee, Zoe Steele, Just a Penguin, Kuza, Equinox Music, Julie, Prism, April B, Creative JK, Adelaide Parade, Malin, Galaxy, Chico Mode, Frigid Duck, Caleb Hodgetrifer, The Siderian, Xylo, Goose Nerd, Addie Fields, Zealous, Secretly Ashlyn, Espen, Postal Dude, and Red Mustached Alien. If you'd like to join these wonderful folks, you can check out my Patreon in the link in the description. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and peace out.